What's up guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Rissa B. And in today's video, I will be talking to you guys about my career journey. Kind of like a rehashing of an older video that I've done along with updating you guys on my new position. If you've seen my last video, then you guys know that I've got a promotion at my job. And so I want to come back on here and just explain to you guys how I got from A to Z. And I guess a little bit about what I do in my position. So if you're interested in seeing about that, then keep on watching. So starting from the beginning, I have a bachelor's of science in biology, just a general biology degree. I don't have a bachelor's degree in um, MLS, clinical laboratory science, nothing like that. If you saw my last video, then you know that I am currently in school for a biotechnology certificate, um, specifically a graduate certificate. In order to get this certificate or go to school for it, you do already have to have a bachelor's degree of some sort. So that is what I am currently in school for. And I just started that at the beginning of January, so the beginning of 2023. So yeah, a bachelor's degree in biology and currently working towards a graduate certificate in biotechnology. If you followed my page for a while, then you know that I attended nursing school for a very brief time period. This is before my first lab job and after me getting a biology degree. So this was years ago. I only attended for like a semester or two and then I decided to take my first lab position. And my first lab position was as a clinical laboratory technologist. This was back in May of 2020. And that was my first ever like lab job out of college. In that job, I will say, or in that role, um, I learned a lot of kind of like the basic lab techniques. Like, you know, there were things from college that I remember such as like pipetting and different types of instruments and different types of liquids and things like that, like different techniques like that. I worked in an oncology lab. We did beaming and I also did um, next generation sequencing. If you want a video of me going more in depth of what next generation sequencing is um, and possibly beaming too, I can do a video about that. I would say beaming isn't as common nor is it used as much, especially since they have next generation sequencing now. But if you guys want a video on that, I could definitely talk about both of those techniques. But back to the story I um, that was my first lab job I was there for a year and about a year and a half I would say I think in October or maybe November very big very beginning of November of 2021 I switched companies and I went to another oncology company but I went to the R&D department research and development, and I was an RA there, or a research associate. That was my new position. I was a contract employee. I will link a, a video on the screen or in the description box talking about what it's like to work for a contract company. But I worked for I worked for them. Uh, my contract was for six months. It got extended for a little bit, uh, maybe about total eight months maybe I worked as a contract and then I was brought on as a full-time employee and in that company I did very similar to what I did at my first company so I was with another oncology company and with the R&D department we were developing assays um, very similar types of assays but for specific types of cancer or clinical trials or hospitals. So the need of the assay varied, but it was still next generation sequencing. It was still dealing with oncology. And also with the R&D department, I wasn't testing patient samples. We were a part of like developing it, troubleshooting it, taking it from beginning to end and proving that it actually worked the way we said it worked. So that's what I did at that company. And I was there for a total of um, maybe nine or 10 months and then I moved to my current company and I wasn't looking for a job um, at my current company. I have the manager who was my manager at my first company. So she is also now at this company and as well as my previous director. She's also the director of my department at this company. So they both reached out to me. We talked a little bit about it and it just seemed like the right fit and the right move for me. So I did end up moving companies and at this new company, I started in August of 2022. 
Yes, yeah, so just last year, last past August, and I came on as a research associate and we were at the beginning stages of the company. So at that point, the company was about a year and a half old, I would say, when I came there. So it was still very, very new. There was not a lot of employees there. I believe I am employee number 27 of the company, I think. So very new, um, they were just getting things up and running. We were still ordering equipment for the lab, still hashing out a lot of SOPs and things like that. So it was like in the very, not the, like the first startup stages, but I was still at a startup company. And that is one of the reasons that made me come to this company is because it was so new. And I would say it's definitely very advantageous. I don't know if that's a word. There's a good advantage of working for a startup company. Of course, there's the downfalls, but I think that if you can find a biotech company, if that's what you wanna work in, biotechnology like I do, I would definitely look for a startup company. I think you have a lot of potential when you're working with a startup company so that's what I did I came to this company and I also took on the role of inventory manager so I'm still doing inventory manager duties so I've been there since August of 2022 and then of May of 2023 is when I got my promotion and so now my current title is a scientist I'm currently a scientist and I'm still also the inventory manager so still doing both things my days are very very hectic very busy. I feel like I definitely have to get back into the swing of doing uh, YouTube videos. So yeah, that's where I am right now. I'm a scientist and if you kept track, that means uh, I started my very first lab job in May of 2020, and then literally almost almost exactly three years, I got my promotion to a scientist. And I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about what I do or like what my day-to-day -day is like, even though my day-to-day -day changes very, very often, but I will do my best to talk to you guys and let you guys know what my day-to-day -day is like. From the scientist side, I will say, um, some of my responsibilities are training. So myself and another scientist, we are trained in just about every assay or every procedure that we have in the lab. And so when our R&D when our R&D department transfer procedures to us, we take those procedures, we look over them, we we rewrite them, we make sure that it makes sense for our lab. Since we are not a R&D lab, we are a CLIA lab. And so we have more, um, I guess, stringent. Uh, rules and things that we have to abide by. So we make sure that it fits our lab and then we test those procedures and any tr uh, troubleshooting that's needed, any rewrite of the procedure or SOP, we do all of that and we make sure that it's good to go before transferring it to our lab ops team. Our lab ops team are the team of technicians, our technologists. So we train the technologists on the procedures, we monitor them, make sure they know everything and getting their hands on practice and we guide them from beginning to end to their sign off so that is one thing that we are in charge of and then myself and the other scientists that I was telling you about we're also in charge of training people who are um, our company is merging with another company so we're also in charge of training the employees of that company even though we're all like one big company now we're still kind of separate so yeah we're in charge of training them as well so that's been like really hectic and things like that we write SOPs we do training and part of that because you are with um, the newer technologists and things like that and you develop a bond with them we typically answer all of their questions um, throughout the day whether that's about documentation a procedure um, any it, it could be it ranges so we answer a lot of questions a lot of the technologists questions that they have throughout the day um, some of them are complex some of them are simple and it's just things that you know as you get more comfortable in your role in the company with the procedures and you get more comfortable and there'll be less questions uh, we also help with the hiring so all the new people that we have um, myself and other scientists and the managers, we sat in and conducted the interviews, talked about who we want to hire, came up with questions, reviewed resumes, things like that. So that's another 
role that I have is helping with the hiring process for the lab operations team or the technologists that we have currently in the lab. And then there's just other like a lot of miscellaneous items that we do, such as um, making sure that the labs are like nice and clean and orderly, making sure that things are stocked and people know what their stations are and what they're trained in and making sure that the labs are getting cleaned properly, scanning, filing, writing emails, um, writing more procedures. So it definitely varies. And my job, especially because we are a small company, so you kind of wear a lot of hats. You do a lot of things. You do equipment, ma equipment maintenance, a lot of things. So it, it ranges, you know. And as a scientist, you're supposed to be, or for my company at least, not only is it just, you know, teaching and training and answering questions, it's also being about are about being a person that people can come to, being knowledgeable, making sure that you stay updated on things and on top of any work that it's assigned to you. And then the other role that I have is inventory manager. And so with inventory manager, it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. I'm in charge of making sure that we have inventory, a correct and accurate inventory. And I have a gigantic spreadsheet that ranges from primers, reagents, consumables, like a ton of things. I track the lot number, I track the date we received, to think the items. I track the catalog number, the vendor, when it expires, of course. Um, we have release dates. So certain, most of the things that I keep track of when we order them, before we can use them in the lab, they have to have proper, proper documentation and paperwork that technicians have to fill out. So they fill, those, they fill out those uh, forms that are required, send them to me, I review the forms, I re approve them or I reject them for whatever reason. And yeah, and I make sure that if we do have something in the lab, that if it's released is what we call it, it's being used, if it's not released, it's properly quarantined so that it doesn't accidentally get used and make sure that anything that's expired is tossed, et cetera, et cetera, making sure we don't run out of, run out of items. The other thing that I do is I am in charge of QC testing. So we have a lot of reagents and uh, reagent prep, a lot of procedures that require QC testing or quality control testing. And so my job with that is to make sure that we're testing the right thing. So documentation is correct for the QC testing, the technologist carrying out the QC, understand what's going on and what's expected of them. And then when we get those QC results from our sequencer, or from sequencing, I should say, I review those results, see if everything is in spec, and then I approve or again, reject whatever it was being QC tested, and I release it in the lab or make sure that it's not getting used until we fix the problem. And so that is my responsibility as inventory manager. I feel like that's like a super quick update of what I do. I'm not exactly sure if I was answering anyone's questions. A lot of people ask for update, they want to hear about a new job, but there weren't any specific questions, so I hope I covered what you guys are looking for. Um, if not, just leave them down below and I'll answer them below, or I can make another video. Um, I was super excited to get the promotion, came out of nowhere, I did not expect it. Very exciting, but also very, um, a lot of pressure, I would say, because now that you have the promotion or now that I have the promotion, I don't want to uh, fall behind or start slacking off and make them think, you know, oh, now she got the promotion, she's not doing what she needs to do. So I'm definitely trying to make sure I stay on top of things. Uh, we have a lot going on right now, so it's been a lot. Um, on the scientist side as long as well as the inventory side. So I've been super, super busy at work, which is again why I haven't been recording that often, but I am 100% trying to get back into it and hopefully have videos back out to you guys every week, whether it's a sit down video or a vlog or whatever the case may be. So please leave any suggestions that you have for me, anything you want answered, anything like that. I will definitely be answering them for you guys. But that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope Hope you guys found some valuable information in here. Any questions or comments you have, leave them below in the comment section. I will get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.